Hi everyone, I'm Nathan Camarillo and welcome to C2TV episode 4. In this episode you're going to learn more about the aliens that are in Crisis 2 as well as some of our sound and animation techniques. I hope you enjoy this episode. We looked a lot at the enemy types and the challenge was there, okay, now we're in a city environment, what kind of enemies would integrate better there and would make sense and actually provide interesting uh, gameplay? One big difference between the aliens in Crisis 1 and, and Crisis 2 is that the new aliens have feet and oh yeah, the aliens in Crisis 1 didn't. Differently than in Crisis 1 where all the fantasy alien characters were floating around the environment, Crisis 2 has bipedal characters which are a lot more complicated and complex to work with. Obviously they're walking around, they have legs. You can hear footsteps before he sees the alien actually in the distance. This makes a huge difference actually. The aliens are more in the way human-like. The human eye is very, very used to seeing things walking around so um, any small detail that doesn't uh, work or flow right um, is very easily spotted. Quite different classes with different abilities and that's quite interesting. So one enemy type I'm in Crisis I really like is the Stalker, a very cunning, sneaky enemy. That we specifically designed to really work very well in the vertical environment that Crisis 2 takes place. So he can jump down, jump over things, leap up walls, move along the wall. He becomes a really interesting, challenging element in the in the gameplay and a very scary one. The heavy, having a very large mass, being also bipedal, um, he's very bulky, he runs through things, he likes to knock things around. We worked with a stuntman who worked uh, in the film Incredible Hulk. We put him in a mocap suit and uh, worked with him to get some case studies and um, animation studies on how we would want these aliens to move around, to turn, to breathe. Just to get a, a good feeling working with, with someone who has a lot of experience in that was a very good thing, definitely. To me, it feels as though it's puppeteering this body. It, it sort of leads with the brain and then the mechanics of the body follows. I instantly thought, well, if they're mechanical on the bottom and they're organic on the top, then it would be nice to sort of have false limbs that would work with in the motion capture volume. We've had to work very intensely doing a lot of animation tests and studies on how we want these, these characters to, to walk around, talk, act and not look like a man in a suit but actually also have character and personality and look out of this world basically. All the aliens are hand key animation, it's all done by hand. Our aliens have uh, three leg joints, like a horse's uh, legs, and that would have been quite quite difficult to, to actually mocap. And, you know, as an animator, you like to, to be able to get down and dirty and put your hands in, in the work and, and animate by hand, actually, if, if, if possible. So we've done that with all the aliens. The human characters, it's a mixture between mocap data and hand key animation. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun because we've gotten to be able to explore um, a lot of different areas by Hanky animating these aliens. We worked with, a, with an external studio using a facial motion capture uh, technology which captures every muscle and joint without needing to actually put the, ref the motion capture reflectors on the face. Um, actually just by recording video, the, the technology basically uses the camera footage, the video footage, to control the exact movement of every muscle and joint in the face which then gets interpolated into data, into the computer and then a whole team of animators 
and go in and clean up that data and make sure that everything looks nice and, and very realistic. Our feedback, feedback sound. Our sound hits the wall. You see that debug information. The, the funny thing is that you know, crisis is always so graphics heavy that you have to follow up on sound. The research phase, of course, we were looking at everything which was done out there, you know, from, from Aliens 1 to District 9. The biggest challenge was to not redo something which has already been done, because it's so easy to kind of fall into the thing like, oh yeah, this sounds like. This time we went out and recorded a lot of stuff ourselves, so we went for shooting actually real guns in, in, uh, in the desert and really made our own recordings and not working so much from library. And, and as Christian said, like, I think also the big difference is like the more cinematic moments we have now in Crisis 2, which gives us more possibilities also to draw a little bit more audio cool stuff. Now we kind of in the direction of like energetic sounds, which are a lot of based on actually instruments. So we use a lot of guitar and basses and, and kind of you know distort stuff in the end and heavily processing, of course. Sound is a little bit like you know like colors is something. Some people prefer blue, some people red. In the end, does it work or not? And then the rest is taste. So far, I think we're on a pretty good track to just, you know, be at least this unique thing that you kind of hear the sound, you kind of, oh, this is crisis. So this is the big challenge, but also a big opportunity to just, you know, being really unique. In the last couple of weeks, actually, I've really started to see everything coming together. Um, finally, you can really see the light at the end of the tunnel and all the hard um, work that we've been putting in really start to um, take place and come together. And I really, really feel like uh, Crisis 2 has the potential to be a very amazing game. Thanks for watching this episode of C2TV. Remember, there will be more episodes in the future. In the meantime, check out mycrisis.com for all the latest Crisis 2 news and media.